Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 233. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 233 to 245. Hey, in this trick, I got two important Excel tricks for business math or any uh, business situation. The first is checkbook. Now, here it is, uh, check date. Check issue to amount. This is a subtraction, and uh, these this green column is deposit. Here's what a lot of people do. Right, so they see this and they go equals one cell above uh, minus because this one is uh, a minus, and then enter, and then they come over here. They do the next one equals uh, the cell above minus this one right here. Same thing here equals. Uh, and you could actually uh, copy that one down all the way to there because those are relative cell references. Uh, looking one above and uh, one, two, three, four to my left. But you get here, and this is a different formula. So then you go equals the one above plus this. The problem with this method is that um, if you have a big long checkbook, you're always creating formulas. You don't want to do that. We could do this whole column here uh, down to here with one simple formula. But it requires that you recognize something. And these kind of patterns and recognize these patterns for creating formula is really one of the biggest time savers in Excel. Let's just uh, think about this. One cell above here. Well, look, there's either going to be a minus here or a plus here. There's never going to be both. So we can simply do this formula equals the balance from above minus uh, four cells to my left plus one cell to my left. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Because this is always going to be a zero when there's something here. And when we get down here, if there's something here, there'll be a zero there. So this formula is always going to be adding or subtracting to zero, which doesn't matter. We'll get the same answer. Control Enter. And then I'm going to click and drag, bring this down here. The point is here. 100% this formula is faster. One formula instead of, you know, 13 or 20 or 40 or however many cells you have. Now, one other improvement we can do this, because down here is kind of annoying to see the balance, is to um, notice another pattern. We could do an if formula and have the if put either this formula or a blank. But we got to figure out a logical test that will give us true or false. So the pattern we're rec going to look for here is where in this checkbook balance could, do we have something that we're, we're always going to have uh, something in a cell? Well, it looks like we always have something here. Uh, and there's not always something here. Probably the best thing. Uh, to look for is the date. Notice we're always going to have a date. I guess it's conceivable there might be a blank here. So let's pick the date column and simply uh, notice that when we get down here, there's no date, right? But all of these that have transactions, there's a date. So we could use the if function to make this much better. Ready? Equals if. And I'm going to go however many cells over to the left, that is, as a relative cell reference, is the, if that's equal to blank. And blank in Excel is double quote, comma. Now, that's the logical test. It comes out true or false. Hey, if it's blank over there, what do we want in this cell right here? If there's no date, what do we want? We need to tell this if function the value of true. So guess what? We're going to put a double quote. That's blank. Otherwise, if it's false, which means there is something in the cell, then we'll have this formula. So that formula will work. Control Enter. I'm going to double click and send it down. You can see down here, now it's blank. As soon as we put something over here, we put uh, today's date. Control semicolon is the keyboard shortcut for today's date. Sure enough, the formula comes on. This is a deposit. And I'm going to say uh, they were required to have that there. And we deposited $1,000. And there you go. It updates. So that's trick number one. Always think about uh, how you can build formulas most efficiently to avoid lots of extra formula creation. Uh, business math trick number two, we're going to come over here. This is for uh, sales invoices. And lots of people do sales invoices in Excel. But here is a common mistake. If you're multiplying decimals, or dividing for that matter, we have things like a sales tax rate and a credit card fee. If 
you are multiplying decimals and you're going to use the uh, calculation you make in subsequent calculations, you have to use the round function. Let me show what, uh, what you mean here. Subtotal. Well, first, we want to multiply. And this counts. Um, we're multiplying decimals, 0.55. So we're going to use the round function instead of just um, in a cell having that uh, price each times the uh, units sold, right? Instead of just having this little thing right here in the format, we want the round because we're multiplying decimals. Comma, and it says how many digits? Two. I always think of uh, money, right? There's two digits to the right of the decimal, so that's why we put a two there. Right? And then uh, we can um, calculate the sales tax. Again, we're going to have to do the same thing around. If you just did this, the problem is you could um, get, a, you get a lot of extra decimals if we increase the decimals. You can see there's a bunch of decimals. And with money, you have to round to the integer. Now, this doesn't matter. We could just um, hide it if we're not going to use this in a subsequent calculation. But guess what? This is the sales tax. And our calculation here is going to be um, to add the sales tax. So that's what I mean by a subsequent calculation. So because we're multiplying decimals, forget it. You got to use the round. This is money. You are required to round to the penny. So round, comma, two. And there it is. You can see that that is the method in Excel to, to hack off those extra uh, digits and round to the uh, penny. So now we can add these. I'm going to add those two. Credit card fee, again, here's the same thing. we got to use round. If you don't, what happens? Equals this total times the credit card fee. If we increase the decimals, oh, there's a bunch of uh, decimals hanging out there. We really want this to be 0.13, not 0.1261. So I'm going to hit F2, and I'll put the round around. And then comma 2, because we're going to the penny. And there it is. You can see that it hacks it off. And then we're, um, our criteria for when to use the round function, uh, we're using money, so we're required to round. We're multiplying decimals, and boom, we're using a subsequent calculation, that in a subsequent calculation. So equals this minus the credit card fee. All right, so invoicing uh, round function. Uh, be sure and use it whenever you have one, two, three. Uh, you're required to round, multiplying decimals, using uh, result in a subsequent calculation, and then, of course, our little checkbook formula for efficiency. All right, see you next trick.